Good day, everyone, um, and welcome to the first of our a series on bamboo construction technology here in the Philippines. Um, I am Pablo Hurilio, and I will be your moderator for today. As you can see from my background, uh, I am live streaming uh, from our base innovation center where we do research and development. Uh, you can see a pilot of one of the houses design, house design that we are doing uh, in collaborations with some of our university partners and NGO. Um, for today, uh, uh, we will have a the, the first of the series uh, sponsored by Base by Foundation on the different topics on bamboo construction and technology. Um, we are starting this series uh, mainly with the objective to expand the knowledge base on bamboo material. Uh, we would like to promote awareness and we would like to expand interest on the use of bamboo as a sustainable and reliable construction material. Um, this may uh, be through the Department of Trade and Industry and Bureau of Philippine National Standard has adapted and now implementing the new international standards set by ISO on the construction grade bamboo. Actually, this is a very exciting time for all of us who are doing research on bamboo structures and at the same time using bamboo material uh, in the construction. And on top of that, all other applications where we use bamboo. Um, but for many of us, what are these two or um, Philippine National Standard or ISO standard mean exactly? What do the, what do this Philippine National Standard ISO 22157 in terms of methodology for testing the physical and mechanical properties of bamboo and uh, the PNS ISO standard 19624 for the grading of the bamboo poles. What does this mean for us researchers? What does this mean for us who are using bamboo in the housing technology? For us uh, supplier who are supplying the bamboo, uh, especially the structural grade to the construction industry. Um, very interesting topics. And, and uh, this, is what we will be discussing in today's uh, Facebook Live. Um, we hope everyone will learn and then pick up something about this from our four experts uh, who would be presenting to us in the next uh, one hour or so. Uh, by the way, before I continue, um, at the end of the presentation or at the end of our session, we will have a question and answer forum. Uh, please don't hesitate to put your uh, questions in the live comments uh, in your Facebook and our support staff will record your questions and give it to, uh, to whom you who you would like to address these questions. Please write your name, your organization and to whom you would like to address the question. Okay, so um, let me introduce to you uh, our four guests uh, who has the these standards and its implications. And we have uh, experts, uh, not only in the academy, but also in the actual uh, uh, construction use of the bamboo. Uh, as for our guests, our first guest, let me uh, welcome Professor David uh, Trujillo of the ISO. Uh, who has been uh, a project leader of ISO 19624, a group who developed the first international standard for grading round pole bamboo. He is currently a professor at Coventry uh, University in UK, School for Energy, Construction and Environment, and currently chairs the INBAR, uh, the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan. Uh, welcome, David. 
Hey. Um, also joining us. Yes. Hello. Also joining us uh, as well is Professor Lisandro Garciano, Chair of the Faculty of Civil Engineering of De La Salle University. Uh, currently a member of the Bureau of Philippine Standards, Technical Committee Number 76. Uh, Professor Garciano is also the, one of the directors of the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines. Uh, you know, Professor Garciano has already been working with us for, for the last couple of years, many years actually, uh, doing bamboo research as a material and as a uh, a frame technology and uh, many of his students, both graduate and undergraduate, are working with base by Hello. Foundation. Well, yeah, no. yeah, hello everyone. So, so uh, with, uh, with us today, architect Ray Villanueva, uh, co-founder of the Kawayan Collective Treatment Facility. Ray, likewise, is co-founder of Estudio Damgo, a student-led community design and build program at Foundation University in Dumaguete City. Uh, our friend Ray is also the co-director of the Philippines uh, Bamboo Workshop Study Abroad Abroad Program at the University of Washington Department of Architecture. Welcome, Ray. Nice to see you again. Nice to be here. Thank you. And and finally, uh, our very own engineer Luis Felipe Lopez, head of our technology and engineering here at Base Bahai. Uh, to our esteemed guests, thank you very much for sharing your time and participating today. Let's kick off the discussion. Let's start with Luis. Um, Luis, maybe you can uh, put us up to speed. Where are we now in terms of bamboo construction technology? Uh, where are we in terms of from research to the actual adoption of technology? in the housing industry, and how did we get here? Luis? Okay, thank you very much, Pablo, for the introduction, and welcome to our first uh, Facebook Live, uh, Best Baha'i, and thank you very much for all of our, our guests and uh, for taking the time to participate in this uh, incredible activity with all of us. So uh, now I want to uh, share with all of you uh, a little bit about uh, the a short, a very short history about Base Baha'i and the use of ISO standards in Base Baha'i with uh, the history of the of the company. So, uh, to understand uh, what is doing Base Baha'i here in the Philippines, I have this slide that shows uh, the, the, the the around 2011 uh, with the research of a of Corina Salzer, our uh, first engineer here in Bes Bahai, and she was doing her thesis uh, with the supporting of Hilti Foundation. So um, at that time, she was doing some research in mechanical properties and 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 wall chill resistance and 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 connections with the support uh, by supporting by me from Colombia. We were working on that. So in 2013, Hilti Foundation decided to create Base Baha'i in the Philippines to uh, promote the use of a sustainable materials, focusing in bamboo construction here in the country. So since 2014, we start to build houses and around the country with uh, several partners, including Habitat for Humanity, uh, Homeless People Federation, etc. cetera. I, uh, there's many more. And in uh, 2000. Uh, 17, we decide to promote also the, the production of bamboo, creating uh, uh, treatment facilities with other partners. Um, next slide, please. So the Best Baha'i technology is a, is a technology uh, that uses walls as shear wall system. And it's a bamboo uh, a structural system that combines bamboo and mortar cladding 
to protect the bamboo against the, the, the environment. So we have this bamboo light frame bamboo walls plastered with uh, mortar cement. And uh, the system was based in, in the traditional construction system from Latin America called Bajareque and Cementado, but with uh, a lot of modifications uh, due to the typhoon uh, problem in the Philippines. So we have to reinforce the structure to resist typhoons. And also we adapt a lot of the traditional way to build Bajareque in the Philippines. So we create something new here that we call cement bamboo frame technology that is a, is a unique technology for uh, the uh, social housing sector in the Philippines. So these houses can resist typhoons until 250 kilometers per hour, already passed in real life. We, 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 our projects were tested with the several typhoons already without any damage. Uh, also can resist earthquakes uh, without any problem because the system is very light. And uh, the walls that are double cladding with uh, plastering can resist more than uh, one or two hours of fire. So giving the families time to, to escape of the fire brigades to uh, uh, extinguish the, the, the fire. And also with our treatment methods, we can uh, guarantee that bamboos will be no attacked by insects or fungus during the lifespan of the construction. Next. So in 2015, uh, we present all the results of our test. Many of them was uh, done using ISO standards to uh, the National Housing Authority. So uh, we were able to get uh, the accreditation of innovative technologies for housing or more common known here in the, in the Philippines as IATEC accreditation. So the IATEC accreditation is uh, uh, it's an accreditation that allows you to build with technologies that are not included in the building code. So you have to prove that your technology is strong enough and, and, and it's uh, equal resistant with the uh, conventional construction. So we get our accreditation in 2015 and uh, last year we renew for three years more. So now we want to uh, apply for uh, an accreditation for two story houses. Next. So this is just a, a, a short description of our projects here in the Philippines. We have projects in Luzon, we have projects in Visayas, uh, and we have treatment facility in Mindanao as well. This is some pictures of our housing projects here in, in, in Iloilo. We, our first project was 20 two-story houses. We have duplex, we have triplex houses. And, and cities like Quezon uh, City and Tacloban and, and Samar and Sorsogon and Silay. So until now, we uh, built uh, around 800 homes in the whole, in the whole country, uh, giving shelter to more than 3,000 uh, people uh, uh, that they don't have houses before, creating direct jobs. Um, we save a lot of uh, carbon, storage carbon and, uh, and uh, reducing the footprint of, of of a contamination. And right now we have four facilities running by uh, partners organizations that produce uh, all the bamboos that is required for, for these houses. Next. So in 2012, uh, at that time, Best Baha'i uh, didn't exist, uh, but uh, by the lead of Hilti Foundation, uh, we were doing some tests and at that time we were using the ISO 22157, it's a standard to determine mechanical, uh, physical and mechanical properties of bamboo. What that means is the standard that gives the protocols to test the bamboo to understand what is the resistance to compression, to bending, to tension parallel. So all these uh, values are very important if you are going to design structures, because if you don't understand the resistance of the, of the, of the materials, you cannot design anything. So at that time, we used the old ISO standard, uh, uh, the previous one, and uh, we probably were the first group in the Philippines that used that standard to determine mechanical properties. With that uh, standard, we were able to characterize the, the local species, the Kawaiian technique, Bambusa blumeana, and we determined the compression strength, the bending strength, shear, uh, parallel strength, the modulus of elasticity, and that was the, the base 
to have a value that does to but that we were able to design structures here in the in the country. Next. So last year, uh, we realized that uh, it's important to continue the research. So that is why with the support of Hilti Foundation, Best Baha'i decided to create their, uh, its own laboratory. So right now I am here in the, in the laboratory, you can see in the, in the screen and my background. So here we are uh, able to make all these tests in a control ambience uh, using the ISO standards. And we are working uh, in partnership with the La Salle University with the support of Professor Garciano. So uh, we work with it, his students doing the thesis and the idea is to create a center of research for bamboo here in the Southeast Asia that can be used for people all around the world to, to learn how to test bamboo and how to research uh, structures with bamboo. Next. So just to make a bridge between this presentation and, and the next presentation, I want to show uh, a, a short description of the standards uh, of bamboo around the world. So uh, we have first uh, the ISO committee that is in Switzerland. So Switzerland doesn't have any bamboo standard, but the, the, the headquarters of ISO are in Switzerland. So, so I put Switzerland in the map because it, it's ISO there. So uh, ISO um, created the first uh, bamboo standards in 2004. And these two standards were the, the, the ISO um, 152-157 uh, and 22-156. One for mechanical and physical properties, and the other one for uh, structural design. So after that, uh, David will explain you when the standards uh, start to be updated. But that was the origin of the uh, international standards. For other, on other hand, in Latin America, in Colombia, uh, the first uh, national standard for structural design was created in 2002 in, in, in Colombia for uh, a Bareke system similar to what we are doing here in Philippines. And after that, Ecuador and Peru also adopted their own standards. Brazil is working right now in a new standard for structural design, as well Mexico, they already have it, so they have their own standards. The state of California have a, a, a standard that is not the obliga obligatory use, but they, it's a standard for mechanical properties that was created in 2000, probably the first standard uh, in the world but it's not an official standard, so it's not obligatory. And there is other standards in China for laminate bamboo. Even India have a construction standard for, from 2009. And now in Philippines, we, we have these new ISO standards for bamboo grading and bamboo mechanical properties. And we hope in the future we can have also, and very, not very far away from now, we can have a, a structural uh, building uh, bamboo standard in the Philippines. So this is the, the introduction that I want to do about what is BASE doing here, how BASE is using the standards, what are the standards in the world. So I want to uh, now pass the, 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 the presentation to one of our uh, guests, David Trujillo from Coventry University. So he is uh, in the ISO committee. He was the responsible of the reactivation of the bamboo committee and ISO. He also uh, lead the creation of the grading bamboo standard and probably is the, uh, an authority of the biggest authority to tell us about all of these uh, uh, standards, uh, new standards in the Philippines. So thank you very much for David to be here. So I give you now the, the lead. Hey, thank you very much, Ms. Felipe. Um, thank you everyone for listening to me uh, today and for joining us. Um, so uh, I've been asked to tell you a bit about why, uh, what is ISO and why standardization important for bamboo. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're going to cover is a bit of origin of codes and standards. What is ISO? Why do we need standards? What is a, what is a progress so far and what is a goal? Next slide, please. 
So I'm going to bore you a bit with the history of why we have codes and standards in the world. So here's a bit of a timeline of the developing of model, modern structural engineering around um, the materials that we associate with structural engineering. So say in 1824, we invented Portland cement and gradually we went through inventing more and more things that led us to both steel and reinforced concrete. And the key material that got people to think about codes and standards was reinforced concrete. Next lead, slide please comes down to um, the, the invention of reinforced concrete. Uh, one of the first systems was developed by a, a gentleman called Francois Hennembeek in France. And the system um, worked on that. They, they invented the, 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 this, this A system of reinforced concrete and they sold licenses uh, around the world. And many people wanted to use this system. Uh, and many other parallel systems of reinforced concrete started appearing around the world. And, and it, what, because this was sort of a, uh, a bespoke system, it made it very hard for people to check if they were do doing the job properly. Besides, it was creating monopolies about the technology. So the development of standards was a way to break monopolies and also to um, allow authorities to check designs for safety. So it creates a level playing field. So here is the important thing. Keywords is level playing field and market. Um, next, please. So uh, what do standards create? Amongst other things that we'll discuss later on, they provide a consensus about best practice. Um, a, a, a historian of engineering pointed out the, th the following three bits, uh, characteristics of codes and standards. So one of the things that we want to know is the properties of materials, including the quality of their manufacture. The second is the various loads that building structures should be designed to carry. And the third one is codes of design practice that provide suitable methods for designing the various structural elements of buildings, columns, beams, floor and shear walls, and the connections between them. So these three things is in what in structural engineering, and I'm a structural engineer, and we're concerning ourselves here with structures, we're after. Now, the first uh, properties of materials, including the quality of the manufacture, is what we've been concerning ourselves today with, which is the testing and the grading of bamboo. The second one is um, something contained in your national codes, which is tells you what wind loads, what earthquake loads, uh, what live loads should be considered when designing. And the last one is one that we've not got round to yet, but we'll be also telling you a bit about today because it's really a very, very exciting uh, project that we're working on and it's uh, the design standard. And who writes these codes and standards? Well, um, typically they are a group that represent product manufacturers, structural designers, and researchers are put together in a room and they come up with codes and standards. Next slide, please. So what is ISO? ISO is International Organization for Standardization. It's an independent, non-governmental organization, and its members are the standards organizations for 164 countries. It was founded back in 1946, and in the process, they have more than 20,000 standards have been set, covering everything from manufactured products and technology to food, safety, agriculture, and healthcare. Now, these bullet points I'm going to mention here are what's sort of the use of standards. So one of use of the standards aids in the creation of products and services that are safe, reliable, and of good quality. Here comes the word safety again. The standards help businesses increase productivity while minimizing errors and waste. So it's good for business. By enabling products from different markets to be directly compared, they facilitate companies in entering new markets and assist the development of global trade on a fair basis. So here comes the word markets again, and fairness. And then the standards were, are also serve to safeguard consumers and the end users of products and services, ensuring 
that com certified products conform to the minimum standards set internationally. So they safeguard consumers. So here's some key points of why we want standards. Can you, next slide, please. So here is a list of some ideas I have of why we, we need standards, and some suggestions. We want them for quality. We want them for consistency. We want them, they represent a consensus. We want them for confidence. If we have something that complies with the standard, it gives us confidence as consumers. The goal, particularly in the case of structures, is safety. We want a fair market. It's not great to have someone producing, say, bam bamboo of high quality and somebody make, producing of low quality and uh, undercutting in price. If you have a standard, you say, well, I'm complying with the standard, but you are not. And that creates a, a fairness to those who produce things of a better quality. It aids also trade because it will tra aid trade within, say, the Philippines and even internationally. If someone wanted to buy uh, bamboo that complied with a certain standard, then you, you would be able to represent that. It ha helps that way the creation of a market. Once you have confidence in a product and you know that it's of certain quality, it stimulates its consumption. And it's therefore a, st a stimulus to business and it protects consumers. Next slide, please. So I came up with this little self-reinforcing cycle of why we need standards. So frequently we are caught in this cycle where there's little research about bamboo. So people don't develop codes and standards. So people don't use them in, uh, in designs. Clients don't say they want to use it. We at universities don't teach it. So uh, ultimately that results in no demand. Because there's no demand, researchers don't think it's justified to research it. And so you create this cycle that perpetuates itself of why materials that are very good and very promising don't get uh, uh, consumed more. Next slide, please. But if we break that cycle by starting to research the material, and by developing codes and standards, gradually everyone will start specifying, designing with it and teaching it. For example, as a lecturer, we would start to think, well, maybe we should be teaching about bamboo structures because uh, the codes are there, the evidence is there, and with that we help create a demand for the material. So this is a cycle that could change things significantly. Next slide, please. So around the world, it's not been static, the development of, of codes and standards. The first sort of standard, if you like, uh, emerged in uh, California, actually, in 2000. It wasn't a particularly useful standard. And if you see this little table that I've written, it shows what use it has. And the only thing that it... Uh, served for was derivation of design values on the basis of test results. An important breakthrough came in 2002 from in Colombia uh, that had a, a slightly more useful standard that you could design some very simply some columns and shear walls and it was for one single species of bamboo. In 2004 ISO publishes uh, 22157 which is one code we, uh, standard we're going to talk about and it publishes also a design standard which wasn't particularly useful either but it could it gave you a process to de derive uh, design values and gradually we see across the world there is an advance a significant advance came in 2010 in Colombia and you can see it ticks most of those boxes because it could do most of the things contained there the one thing that you will see consistently no standard ever developed particularly well was the aspect of grading, which we'll talk about more today. In 2021, we expect to see ISO 22156, which I'll talk a bit more about in a moment, which ticks practically every single box. And those that it doesn't tick, it has a link to an ISO standard that does. Uh, 
So say, for example, mechanical properties is not covered by 22156, but it sends you to 22157. And grading is not covered in the standard, but it sends you to ISO 19624. So gradually, we hope that this new standard that comes in 2021 will be a significant game changer. Next slide, please. So back in September 2013, um, I attended the Technical Committee 165 of ISO, which is Timber Structures. We created a working group within it called um, Structural Use of Bamboo. And this was an event uh, hosted at Stuttgart. And um, I presented the idea that we needed a, um, a new uh, working group and a new uh, set of standards and we've had support from across the world in this development. Next please. So let me tell you a bit about what has emerged from um, these um, standards. So back in 2013, we agreed that we would firstly revise ISO 22157, which was the one of testing for mechanical properties, which is uh, something that Professor Gra Garciano is going to, to tell us about. And um, and we also decided that we needed to talk about uh, develop a grading standard. And this would be the first bamboo grading standard in the world. So these were the things that we set out to do in uh, 2013. Um, in the process of developing these two standards, we realized that we needed to borrow uh, or develop another set of standards, but we realized that we would, what we would do instead of writing standards, which is a long, difficult process, is we would borrow some of the concepts from timber. So that's why there's an arrow linking ISO 19624 to ISO 12122, because we said, well, the concepts that are laid out there are probably as good as for timber as they are for bamboo because they're just statistical concepts. And so we borrowed that. And, uh, and then we borrowed some other testing procedures from timber, which over time we might decide that we don't want to have borrow those from timber. We might want to make our own for bamboo, but we want to do start with something. And we also always wanted to borrow uh, concepts from the ISO family in, shall I say, um, and an international spirit. Um, we, we could have borrowed concepts from ASTM standards or say EN standards, but we didn't want to uh, associate ourselves too much with uh, a European or American approach. We wanted to work around a, an international approach. And so this family of standards works us through product specification, material testing, determination of characteristic and design values to finally lead us all this long process is to lead us to ISO 22156. We create the basis on which to um, build what we hope will be the world's uh, leading uh, standard for structural design. Uh, and we hope what which each country will do is not necessarily copy word for word ISO 22156, but to use it as a scaffold for building their own national standard of structural design. So that's that's the big picture that we started in 2013 and that will lead us all the way to 2021 in terms of uh, creating a standard for structural design with bamboo. And this is structural design with bamboo as columns, okay? Using it as a, as a round elements, poles, and not uh, engineered products. The, which is we're also working on, but that's a different, separate story. Next slide, please. Hello, next slide. Thank you. So that's me. Um, I will leave you with the next presenter, which I, uh, I think, well, Pablo will introduce him. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, David. Uh, um, very impressive uh, presentation, and and thank you for guiding us to the uh, the background.
Day. I'm very uh, excited to see the 22156, the bamboo structural design. Um, so David, uh, the 22156 is coming out. Uh, the new version is coming out uh, next year. Uh, I, I'm so interested on how it would uh, be cascaded to, to, to other countries like the Philippines. Yeah, well, um, the process of cascading it will be um, very much down to the national standard bodies of each country. Uh, but also, I think there is an element of, how would I put it, to of persuasion and lobbying that has to be done to make people realize that these are standards are worthwhile adopting. Um, national standard bodies sometimes, you know, don't see the need to adopt something if someone is not telling them, well, actually, there is a need to adopt it. Um, secondly, because it's a structural design standard, uh, it um, really needs to be not treated as a, just a standard. It needs to be incorporated into the body of building regulations or code, design codes of the country. So it needs to be, as I say, ISO 22156 is not the final thing. It is a, um, a framework for a structural design code that has some gaps that need to be filled out in. But it, it, it creates a, um, a solid framework, a uh, well thought through framework. Um, it, it draws um, the thinking from across the world of what a structural design bamboo, for bamboo code should look like. It's, it's not just uh, one person dreaming something. It's, a, it's the work of uh, several uh, very good engineers thinking of how it should work. Thank you very much, David. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, as I can see in the live comment uh, part of the presentation, there are already quite a lot of questions and comments and feedback from our viewers. And to all our viewers, thank you very much. Keep the questions and your feedback coming and then we will this to be as interactive and engaging for all of you as much as we can okay thank you again david thank you now uh, thank you moving forward uh we have the the iso the philippine national standard iso 22157 that is the methodology for the testing of the physical and mechanical properties of bamboo and uh our our friend in dallas University Professor Garciano, uh, I'm sure welcomes this uh, uh, in 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 this development in his research work uh, with the students. Now finally we have a Philippine national standard that we can follow uh, and that we can apply and and that we can use. Um, we'll hear more of this from Professor Garciano and sir. Would you yes, like to take you. this? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Can, can I have my slides, please, on the screen? Yeah, so this afternoon, basically, I will talk about what we have been doing at De La Salle University in terms of research. And uh, we are so grateful that uh, we, we have such uh, good collaboration between uh, Base Baha'i. I think four or five years ago, we started this uh, collaboration, and some of our uh, our our students were able to uh, do their research with the help of Base Baha'i. And because, uh, because of bamboo being a sustainable material, it is uh, actually a good, a good, it can be positioned as a, an alternative construction material. And uh, especially there's a high demand for economic and socialized housing in the Philippines. So we must make use of this resource and however, we have uh, a bit of limited uh, data, especially uh, if you're looking towards uh, structural uh, application of, of bamboo as a material. And so therefore that gave us the idea in the, on the research side to, to test these bamboos that we have, some, some uh, local species. And at the time, uh, we were looking at uh, ISO uh, and ASTM prior to the release of 22157. And we have the, uh, I think the uh, 221, the PNS 22156 in 20, 2010, Bamboo Structural Design. 
and we are uh, excited to see this uh, uh, new standard. And uh, in this uh, PNS ISO 22157 in 2020, I just showed you in the screen the, the, the five uh, test methods uh, that, that, we can, that we can use, we can follow to test uh, our local species. Like for example, compression strength and stiffness parallel to fibers, tension strength and stiffness parallel uh, tension strength and stiffness parallel to fibers, bending strength and stiffness parallel to fibers, strength parallel to fibers, and tension strength perpendicular to fibers. Uh, so in this case, uh, next slide, please. So as a result of this, uh, we have, I will show in uh, for the next uh, few slides, we the researches that uh, were conducted together with base uh, Baha'i. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So anyway, uh, one of the research that uh, was conducted by our student was the investigation of an alternative uh, testing uh, protocol to determine the shear strength of bamboo parallel to the grain. So one of our graduate students uh, tested uh, about a 100 mm diameter uh, bamboo with a thickness of about 10 mm for shear uh, strength. And the local bamboo known as Kawayang Technique was, uh, uh, was tested for this case, the bam Bambusa Blumiana. And from that uh, uh, research, we were able to uh, to determine the shear strength of bamboo parallel to the grade, specific to that uh, species, local species. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide. And then we have the uh, next slide, please. The assessment of testing protocols for bamboo tension to parallel to grain. So we are actually following uh, the ISO, uh, the, the recent 22157, uh, to determine the, the mechanical, especially the mechanical properties of, of, of local bamboo species. And we also had uh, one graduate student doing this. Actually, there were three together doing different kinds of uh, establishing the mechanical properties. And uh, you can see uh, we were working with the uh, uh, engineer Lu Luis Lopez uh, to be able to uh, come up with this uh, research uh, result. So, so tension parallel uh, parallel to the fibers, and we were able to get some some result. And you can see there this, uh, in the abstract that uh, we were using at the time ASTM D143. This was about three or four years ago. And in the next slide. Uh, also, one of our students were do, doing a, uh, a tensile strength of bamboo perpendicular to the fiber. So uh, again, we were using ISO 22157, the uh, 2019, and the, uh, and the ASTM D143. And uh, we were able to get some, some results for, for, this, uh, for, this, for this mechanical property. And uh, I think last two years ago, uh, because uh, the giant bamboo or Dendrocalamus uh, asper, uh, some of the mechanical properties are not yet established in, uh, for our local species. And so a group of uh, students, uh, undergraduate students, uh, uh, took this task of determining the mechanical properties that were not yet uh, the, obtained based on this uh, uh, based on uh, this uh, some tests you know? and so they were able to conduct tensile strength parallel to the fiber for the same uh, giant bamboo species and compressive strength parallel to fiber so in, in other words one local species with different mechanic establishing different mechanical properties and using 22157-1 uh, for compressive strength and shear strength, as well as uh, we also use modified ASTM D143-94. Uh, 
and uh, and in the next so and uh, also uh, while establishing mechanical properties we also look at uh, some kind of a connection using uh, uh, cement bamboo frame so a bamboo connection method for cement bamboo frame and there were we tested different type three types of uh, connections and uh, you can see there in the screen in the next slide next slide please. Uh, one more slide please. next slide please yeah and in that uh, in this slide you can see the different types type one type two and type three and uh, uh, this you can see here the, the, the different the difference between the types one with uh, with an with a node at the end of the bamboo column the third one the second one doesn't have a a node and the third one is similar except that uh, there is no we didn't uh, introduce cement and the connection you have the j bolt and then we tested that using uh, a, a, a utm in the lab and we were able to get uh, a we were able to at least make some recommendation about which one which one to use in terms of uh, which which one exhibited a good, good connection in terms of the, uh, its resistance to, to to the load and uh, so so we we started this collaboration about four or five years ago with Base Bahai, and we can now now we are, we still continue we are still continuing this collaboration with some of our students also doing their uh, research at the lab facility in uh, Base Bahai. And what I think what is what is more important here, uh, as we can see in the next slide, is that what is the the future work that we want to do. Uh, with respect to, especially with respect to creating a structural code. So we are thinking about the, this collaboration would, would continue to work. Uh, we would continue to do research, not only for local uh, mechanical properties of local bamboos, as well as uh, connections and also uh, other types of uh, other types of possibilities for bamboo as a structural material. And uh, what I'm excited also about is that uh, because I'm part of the ASEP Research and Development Committee, uh, actually I head the ASEP uh, Code Committee, uh, we want to create, we are now creating the committee that will, uh, that will develop this local structural code for bamboo. And we are excited and we are happy that we have uh, something to guide us like ISO 22157 and uh, 22156. And hopefully, after this, uh, during this year, uh, we will be able to create the committee and start working on uh, this uh, this structural code, hand in hand with the uh, the housing code of that the asset is also developing. So that is uh, from from my point of view, from the uh, from the academic side as well as uh, uh, through the asset uh, code committee, and so we are. I am glad that I'm part of this uh, this uh, first Facebook Live, and I'm also glad that uh, we have this strong collaboration between academe and industry, and hopefully we can push this uh, this structural code uh, so that we'll be able to to hopefully uh, release it uh, for for application for structural application in the years uh, to come. Uh, thank you very much, and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Professor Garciano. Uh, uh, Luis is uh, giving me signal. Thank you. 
something is wrong with the connection. Uh, we found an incredible partner with De La Salle University and, 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 and the head of VIEW, and we, we have a very good collaboration, very smooth. We are sharing a lot of ideas and working with the students and creating a lot of information from the Philippine species, uh, that information that we will use for the future of the structural code. But I want to, um, I want to know you as professor, but also part of the asset committee, um, what do you think about the a, a national standard for bamboo construction? How important can be uh, a thing like that in, 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 in the Philippines, for the Philippines economy, for the poor people? Uh, can you tell us something about that? Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's uh, very, I think, uh, timely that we should introduce this uh, structural code, especially that uh, we want to, as much as possible, build sustainable and of course, low cost uh, houses, uh, which uh, we need in this country. And bamboo, uh, of course, timber, bamboo, they are good uh, material for, uh, for building this uh, sustainable and resilient structures. And uh, it's good that we have, to, uh, good we have to establish this uh, structural code that will guide us, uh, guide the engineers, guide also the uh, uh, constructors, construction, uh, on how to better uh, develop uh, bamboo houses that are resistant, especially to typhoons. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Pablo. I think you are muted. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Professor Garciano, uh, for your inputs and, and updates on some of the research work uh, being done in the De La Salle University. Uh, I already have a lot of questions here for you. Uh, a very easy question. Uh, uh, what type of bamboo species have you already tested? Uh, have you considered a, uh, how many bamboo species have you already tried? and? Uh, tested as part of your research program. Yeah, uh, initially we we used bamboo sa uh, bluemiana, uh, the kawayang tinik. We also tested dendrocalamus asper, the giant bamboo. Uh, in uh, at this point in time, we are also testing other species like bamboo sa pulgaris, we have bamboo sa pinensis, as well as uh, gian, uh, It's difficult to pronounce, <laughs> but uh, another species. <laughs> That yes. Is the <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> so yeah, we are we, we, because we now have the momentum, and uh, more or less we know how to, to test the, the species, and we now are reaching out to other local species that would, can be used uh, in the construction. Nice. Thank you very much again, Professor Garciano. And to our viewers, uh, to some of your questions, we will uh, come back to you later on. Uh, actually, as, as I was reading the notes uh, and feedback from our viewers, there is already one question. What is the interrelationship of, uh, of the 22157, which is the testing of the mechanical properties of bamboo, and uh, ISO 19624 or grading of bamboo poles? Uh, I'm holding off to answer that question. And, and I'm sure our guest from Kawaiian Collective, architect Ryan Villanueva, co-founder. Okay, it seems like maybe, all right, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. 
So uh, can you hear me, Ray? Yes, I can. Okay, so I think it's the problem is with the connection of Pablo, so I will take, so I will present you. Um, um, so I want to say uh, hello to Ray Villanueva. He is uh, the co-founder of Hawaiian Collective, our partner in treatment in Dumaguete. So they uh, they have a uh, with together with his wife and, and, and a community also in Dumaguete. They create Hawaiian Collective, uh, um, a social enterprise that work in the treatment of bamboo, but also creating new bamboo products and promoting the use of bamboo for other many uh, uh, uses. So I'm very happy to, to give the word to, to Ray. So he can tell us, because in Base Baha'i, we introduced a system of grading that was not normalized by a standard, but we create our own uh, internal standard to control the quality and classify the bamboos. So we transfer that knowledge to Kawaiian Collective so they can control all the, the production in, in, in their treatment facility. But right now, we actually want to propose them to use the ISO because uh, the ISO is a, a more complete standard for, for the grading. So uh, Ray was studying the standard for the last uh, two weeks. And uh, now I, I would like to, all of us want to know what do you think about this? and if it's vision of the standard and, and, and the field. So I don't want to say more because it's your time, Ray. So please go ahead and tell us about that. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, thank you, Luis, for the introduction and uh, for inviting for this session. And thanks to David and our Professor Trujillo and Graciano for the very important information already discussed. Uh, some great leaders of the bamboo movement in the Philippines and the world in this call. So it's, it's great to be here. So um, my name is Ray Villanueva. I'm an architect and co-founder of Kauai Collective, a bamboo treatment facility in Negros Oriental. Uh, next slide, please. We started a year and a half ago with the mission to elevate bamboo as a sustainable, durable, and beautiful material building, building material for all Filipinos. And like our launch partner based Baha'i, we envision better homes for every Filipino. Next slide, please. We have started a year and a half ago with the mission to elevate bamboo as a sustainable, durable, beautiful uh, building material for our, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what we do uh, will change a little bit this, this year because of the pandemic. But in essence, uh, we collect, treat, and distribute bamboo. So we work with local farmers and cutters to sustainably harvest. We treat bamboo to prevent infestation from mold and insects and we distribute bamboo to customers. Base Baha'i is our largest customer for their project in Salai. But we have also supplied builders, architects, resort owners, mainly in the Visayas region who have, and we also have an engineered uh, bamboo shop uh, where we sell slats and customized panels. So uh, to start answering the question from Luis and Doc PJ, how does Client Collective fit into the conversation about ISO 19624? Well, uh, in the standard ter terminology, Client Collective is classified as a producer supplier, an organization responsible for the grading process and for the preservation of bamboo columns. Next slide, please. And uh, we are very excited about this standard being adopted because it is an essential step in legitimizing bamboo construction. And we know that the grading procedures we use every day ensure the safety and quality of bamboo structures. And so today I'm gonna to talk about the quality control processes we employ at Kauai Collective and how they align with the ISO grading standards. I'll also talk about improvements that we were planning for uh, that David uh, Professor Trujillo mentioned a little bit earlier and also some aspects of the standard that, we're, that are beyond our capacity. Next slide, please. Our QC process is visual grading modeled on base Baha'i's evaluation. So as Luis had mentioned, they had already provided an evaluation for our process that they transferred to us. And uh, yeah, uh, when Luis asked me to come present today, he said that that actually is a grading process. So uh, that, was, that was great to know and also to learn more about the standard. 
and the standard is pretty clear about different ways you can grade bamboo. The visual grading uh, is very much uh, what we're doing here at Quine Collective. There's also machine grading, which um, David, uh, Professor Trujillo, uh, can probably go more in depth about, and it's kind of above what I know about the standard. And um, basically, I'll just go over the visual grading standards that we're using. So the grading starts in the field with our cutting teams. Sorry, the, the previous slide still. But uh, we're, we work with over 40 cutters in the mountains who negotiate directly with landowners to make sure they know what bamboo we need. And we have new cutter orientations and cutter meetings every quarter. And during these meetings, we discuss topics like harvesting sustainably, specifications for the columns we require, and so that the treatment team and they can talk to each other to discuss issues. Uh, uh, we're currently harvesting 150 columns last week or, I mean, sorry, last year we harvested over 11,000 columns and we treated about 11,000 columns a month. So after harvest, we have two procurement specialists that perform QC at the pickup site to ensure bamboo is delivered to our facility complies with condition and geometric properties. So that's kind of the two visual grading properties, uh, condition and geometric. Uh, specifically, we look at the age of the column, the curvature, diameter, and to make sure no columns have drastic fissures, indentations, or infestation. Next slide, please. After delivery, our treatment team continual, continues visual grading. First, our cutting team does what we call sizing, where we look for straightness of a pole at specific lengths. We also take note of maximum and minimum diameters, and wall, th wall thicknesses are also noted. We also evaluate the bow or the curvature because curves are unavoidable. And to meet our standard, the bow cannot exceed more than 2% of the length. So for example, in this middle photo, you see a really curvy bamboo. Um, we would evaluate that. And if we are cutting it in a three meter long length, the pole could only be six centimeters out of center line for it to be uh, past our standard. So in addition, we also look closely at defects like fissures and indentations or cracks and skin damage. So fissures and indentations are limited only to one for the entire length of the pole and the crack cannot be through a node. And uh, skin and fiber damage can occur from transport and cleaning off branches. So the size of the damage and the location determine if a pole is acceptable. Next slide, please. So after the lengths of bamboo are properly sized, the poles are cut considering strict node-to-node -node requirements. For base by high short load-bearing poles, there is a strict guide of the location of the node at the ends of the pole, and an allowance is added for final cutting in the field. And for lo longer poles, we locate a node within at least 10 centimeters of the end to ensure the poles do not crack or split. Next slide, please. So with the geometric conditions locked in after cutting, the poles get cleaned, punched, washed, dried, and treated. And at each stage, the team checks the bamboo for condition defects. Processing from start to finish can take two to three weeks, depending on the weather. And the drying, uh, I guess, depending on the weather for drying and the length of time required for the treatment chemical. If there are any delay in the process, infest infestation can occur. So we constantly inspect the columns for holes from insects and any signs of mold. So during the ECQ, we lost about 200 poles to powder post beetle infestation because we were forced to close and could not process the poles in time. And uh, cracking can happen at any time in the process and we expect to lose around 10% of the poles to fissures and indentation. So after columns are treated, they're put onto storage, color-coded, and ready to be delivered to, to the site. Next slide, please. So all the things that I just discussed from the start to the finish of our process is visual grading uh, as defined. Uh, there are some things that we're, we can definitely improve on that are definitely called out more 
distinctly in the standard. And I think our team is definitely looking to improve. And what I appreciated in the standard was uh, one section, section 10 of the standard. Uh, and it's related to what David mentioned too about consumer confidence. Um, it's, I think what we've been trying to do is develop a construction grade bamboo cut sheet for customers convenience so that they know exactly what specifications of bamboo they're buying and also developing a longer form CSI specification that details grade criteria, structural properties, and all the work that Luis and Dr. Graciano have put their, put, put towards. And so just to enable architects, engineers to specify uh, bamboo that they can rely on and that is safe. And as you can see from this photo, we also get a lot of rejects that, that do not make the grade. Um, but the standard points out that we can start to classify and market these re rejects as a lower grade, which can be still very useful. And um, also do the QC efforts to stop uh, to market it as a kind of above what our low cost competitor is doing in Dumaguete. And in the past year, we've been also working with this big pile and turning them into value added products. Next slide, please. So finally, I wanna talk about some items that are currently a, a beyond our capacity right now. And the reason these standards are too high is mainly due to the lack of funding and expertise for research and development. We are, we're, we're very fortunate and are very fortunate to be partnered with Base Baha'i. Luis and his team have spent years doing research and development for the grading rules, the treatment process, and structural analysis to ensure the quality of bamboo. But if I were a bamboo pro processor starting from scratch and wanted to make my own grading criteria for bamboo columns, I think it would take years to complete uh, the testing and uh, the, the funds to support that those years. So. Um, I'm sure there's lots of different models out there, but uh, I think we're fortunate to be a partner with BASE. And uh, similarly, uh, the machine grading of bamboo, which the ISO goes further in depth, uh, uh, the funding for the, the building of team of bamboo engineers to source the correct machinery, to do all the calibration, to build the test cases uh, would not be possible for us. So that's why uh, Dr. Graciano's work is, is great to hear about today. And from the beginning, we've owed a lot to, to Base Baha'i. And now with their testing facility in place in Makati, we look forward to partnering and growing more very soon. Uh, next, last slide. And so thanks very much for including Quine Collective in the session. Please take note of my contact information. If you have any questions about Quine Collective, uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Nice. Thank you very much, um, Architect Ray. And uh, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, uh, the, the good works that you are doing in, in Dumaguete uh, with the Kawaiian Collective and uh, even initiated, even in the absence of uh, uh, visual grading or ISO 19624, you have already started uh, pre-qualifying and, and doing QA, QC of your bamboo poles and, and, and uh, very knowledgeable into identification of uh, which one are of structural grade and all that would fit our applications in, in the construction for the housing that we're doing in base by. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah. Ray, um, uh, I, say, I, I, I see from uh, the last two slides that there are still a lot of work to do. Right now, we're just uh, sort of pre-qualifying the, the bamboo as uh, to whether they are uh, according to their uh, bow, or uh, fissure or longitudinal indentation. But other than that, uh, there's still more work uh, to be done uh, in terms of uh, uh, setting up, let's say, for a certain diameter, what would be a typical uh, physical properties of that bamboo. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of our viewers would like to uh, connect with you. 
um, and would like to uh, get your uh, and get your expertise on on the pre-qualifying of the bamboo. Um, so, uh, what are your additional uh, now that we have the the ISO nineteen six two four? What are the additional activities that uh, you are planning to do in in Kauaian Collective? Right. Uh, so it's all about um, expanding our market opportunity. And maybe right now we're still focused on Bambusa bluviana. So other species we're looking into. Uh, there's a lot, as I said, the, those rejects out there, there's a lot of potential for that. And I know that uh, Luis and his team are also um, open to testing a lot of those uh, I guess other products that we're developing, like panels and uh, slats. So um, yeah, with it, it seems like there's endless possibilities we could go through, go towards. Um, so that's what makes it exciting. But uh, yeah, I think I think we're just look, looking forward to more collaboration and to see what people want out there. So please get in touch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, and I'm sure after today's uh, Facebook Live, uh, there will be many people who will be uh, contacting you and and working with you on this topic. Great. Again, Ray, thank you very much uh, for your presentation and and uh, for sharing with us your experience in Kauaian Collective, and uh, I am now opening up the uh, the question and answer forum uh, to our four guests uh, to Professor David Trujillo of Coventry University, Professor Garciano in De La Salle University, uh, architect Ray Villanueva in Kawain Collective, and engineer Luis Lopez uh, for the base uh, by head of technology. Um, I have um, Okay, I have one question addressed to uh, uh, Professor David Trujillo. Is uh, ISO 19624 based on visual stress grading? What about uh, uh, the other properties? Uh, is it exclusively defined for a specific species? Do we have to set it up? Uh, how do we uh, publish uh, the the mechanical properties of a certain specific species and a specific uh, diameter or uh, visual graded uh, uh, bamboo. Okay, hey. right. There were a lot of questions in that question. Um, <laughs> so the the first thing to point out is. ISO 19624 is uh, also a um, sort of a framework standard to build a national standard um, based on every country's experiences and needs and possibilities. So uh, ISO 19624 provides, as Ray has pointed out, an option for visual grading and also an op option for uh, machine grading. It is not stress grading because we have come to the conclusion that uh, stress grading is a very specific concept to timber that's not necessarily applicable to uh, bamboo. It's just visual grading or machine grading without the word stress. Um, is it defined for a particular species? No, we try to make it as open to any species of bamboo that someone could come along with. Uh, so this is why it's a framework for, an, for the creation of a national standard. Um, as, as Ray has probably encountered, there are many things there that are quite um, generic. And that's deliberate because we, we couldn't rule for a species that we had not worked with. So we had worked with some species, but we didn't know everyone. And if someone comes along with a new species to work with, um, they would want to adapt it. So um, so that is uh, 
the other thing to point out. Then there's another question that says, could you give us a quick example of how to connect ISO 22157 and 19624? So 22157 is a standalone standard and it's for testing. It sort of says, if you're going to test bamboo, test it this way. And what ISO 19624 does, which Ray has pointed out to us, and thank you very much for doing that, is that it creates something called grading rules. So the grading rules are that once you have decided how you want to grade material, and it's not just the first part that Ray has already been doing, which is saying, for example, eliminate cracks and curvature and all those things, but you might want to create some new grades. It could be as simple as, say, structural grade and non-structural grade, or it might be, for example, diameter-based. So you might want to say, well, our bamboo comes of such a diameter, our one grade, say, uh, 10 centimeters, and another, one, another grade could be 8 centimeters, and so forth, depending on your bamboo species. Um, then you would want to know how strong they are. So one way to do it, which is not the one... ISO 19624 is advocating you do. One way is that you just test some and you say, well, Bambusa blumiana resists so much. But that that is quite um, coarse because it could be that in different parts of the Philippines, Bambusa blumiana produces different strengths because the ground is better, because the weather is more favorable, whatever. So what ideally would happen next is that, say, if we take Ray's example, that he works with the, his local farmers and he says, okay, we're going to collect some bamboo from across your farms. It's a sort of um, random, but not fully random sample because you would want it to be representative. So we're going to get from this farm and from that farm and from the hill and from the flatland, some samples. We're going to put them through our grading process uh, so we'll eliminate those with cracks and so forth. Uh, we will dry them to whatever level of dryness we can achieve. And then we'll ship them off to Bambe Base Baha'i. And they will test them for us. They get them tested. And then they report back the, re the properties of that bamboo. So then Kawaiian Collective could say, our bamboo of grade 10 centimeters diameter resists so much because it's been tested according to ISO 22157, and we've sampled it in accordance to this, this other criteria. So then Kawaiian Collective could sell its bamboo, not just as being treated and dried and cleaned and sustainable, but also compliant with the grading protocol and of a certain resistance. So they could say, our bamboo resists so much. So that, that's the vision. Um, Thank you, I David. Just want to yeah, add something. Uh, I just want to add something. Sorry, uh, is um, uh, in the future when we can have a, a building code for the Philippines, including national building code, we were, are able to do that. Um, the, the, the Philippine code will have some resistance, a minimum resistance for design, of course, with certain safety factors and and and, uh, and reduction factors of resistance that will be used by the engineers to design. So uh, to complement what David was saying uh, is that uh, once the tests are done, we, in, the, in the laboratory, we get final uh, resistance. So, but in the code, that resistance is very low compared with the final resistance. So what uh, uh, a company like Hawaiian Collective or all uh, others of uh, our partners in, in Elevan Foundation and Bukit Non, uh, Rojas Foundation in, in Batangas, or even our partner association in Murcia, and, and then is say our bamboo can resist or uh, is com uh, complying the resistance of the National Building Code. So, so the people knows that the bamboo they are buying from Hawaiian or other of our partners is a structural uh, safe and sturdy and can resist the, the minimum loads in the building code. So that is other advance, but for that we need to develop the, the building code that uh, is coming right now in ISO. So I want to also ask David, what is the status of the new ISO uh, uh, 22156, that is for structural design? And when do you think we can see the light? When that... Uh, uh, Standard will be 
of, um, be, can be applicable to or adapted by many countries. I want to tell the, the, the community also before David uh, answer that I, I represent Colombia and the ISO committee, so I am working with David and this is standard. And I forget to tell all of you uh, in the beginning of my presentation that this year we got the, the, the acceptance of Philippines as a P member, that is the maximum status in the committee, and is represented uh, by Professor Garciano. So in the annual year that we will have and through virtual meeting this, this year for obvious reasons, Professor Garciano will represent Philippines and, and the discussion that we are having in and around this new standard. For please, David, tell us a little bit what is the status of that standard. Okay, um, so developing standards through ISO is slow. It takes about five years to develop a standard, um, and this was always going to be a difficult standard to produce because it's about uh, structural design. And so it, 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 it goes into a great deal level of detail and its safety is paramount. Um, the status is that hopefully uh, in the next months or so, we will be progressing onto uh, a next stage. So gradually what happens is that the codes, the consultative process in a development of an ISO standard is that it gradually creates bigger and bigger and bigger circles of consultation. So initially it's just within the working group, then it's within the committee, and then eventually it goes to the whole planet. Um, and that's where we're going to enter. We're going to enter the stage of consultation to the whole planet, and um, hopefully response is going to be positive. But um, we cannot promise that that's going to be the case because there might be someone who raises significant objections. However, if all goes to plan, we should have a new standard in 2021. Um, maybe towards the end of 2021, we will have a ISO 22156. Uh, I take the opportunity, lots of people have asked lots of questions about uh, the standard, so I'm going to mention some things. One is that it is adaptable to any bamboo species, though we, the authors, when we were writing it, were thinking mainly of bamboos of diameters that are slightly larger. So with imagining bamboos of like a 50 mil or larger, uh, more like 75 mil or larger diameters, um, it's not that you can't build with smaller bamboos. It's just that there isn't enough experience so that we could design the code around that. The other thing is um, that uh, it doesn't prescribe how you build connections. It just tells you what you have to consider when you develop connections. Um, and that is because someone might still come up with a better invention for a connection. It's, it's unlike timber, where we have very good ideas how to make connections in timber. Uh, with bamboo, we are sort of still inventing them. So it, more than anything, it's creating an approach to how to what a connection should do. And then you have to go and test them to work out their capacities. So it's, it's not uh, a plug and play standard. You can't just go and say, I'm going to design us from tomorrow with it. You need to collect more information. And that's again, that's why I say it's a, it's a formwork of a, it's a scaffold, if you like, of a standard, but you, there are some gaps that each country has to fill in. Nice. Thank you, David. Um, there is a another question relevant to that, and this question is addressed to Professor Garciano. Uh, it came from Vanji Montalbo. Um, more of the question is more on the standard parameter, but the, the more important part of her question is, where are we now in, in the move to be included in the National Structural Code of the Philippines uh, when it comes to so that uh, there will be more usage of, of the bamboo as a construction material. Yeah, okay, thank you for that question. Uh, well, as uh, Louis mentioned, we just uh, started to become a uh, member in the ISO uh, the, the committee and uh, hopefully we can, uh, we, we, we came in late, but uh, that is the start of, of uh, of preparing the national code, especially for, for bamboo. 
because we have reinforced concrete in the NSEP, we have steel, we even have timber as Chapter 7. I have, uh, I have proposed it in the asset uh, uh, committee and uh, the president, uh, Engineer Rani Season, actually also both of the two of us are members of that uh, for, for, for the Philippines. And uh, he, had, he has, uh, uh, he is supporting this uh, initiative and hopefully in the, in the coming months, we'll be able to come up with a committee that will start working on this uh, uh, structural code and hopefully we'll be guided by uh, ISO 2156. And uh, as uh, Professor Trujillo said, uh, we have to locally, we have to fill in the gaps so that it can be used here in the, in the Philippines. And uh, uh, yeah, that is the direction that we are taking together with, of course, with Base Baha'i and other uh, other stakeholders probably in the near future. Thank you very much, Professor Garciano. Uh, we are running short of time, but uh, I have one interesting question for architect Ray Villanueva. Again, more of the pre-qualification of the, of the structural grade bamboo. Uh, the question is coming from Marcelo Luteria. Um, architect Ray, supposedly uh, when there is a small crack in the bamboo because of mishandling to transport, uh, we, will there be a downside for using such a, a material, especially for graded bamboo? Are there construction remedies for this issue if it occurs during construction? I guess I can uh, address this question both to Ray and Luis. Yeah, uh, Luis is probably more qualified than I to answer that question, but um, I guess our guidelines for visual grading, as I mentioned in, in the uh, defects uh, in portion of the presentation, when we do have a small crack, uh, we have to analyze it if it's how big it is, where it is on the pole, uh, if it's if there's other cracks along the length, because we're only allowed one uh, crack per pole and not through a node. So uh, that's that's how we visually grade it. Um, yes, but as for when it's already installed, Luis, please. Yeah, yeah. So let me <laughs> answer that. So yes, uh, cracks is one of probably one of the most critical issues in bamboo uh, and 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 the, uh, and the anatomy of bamboo because all the species and this is relevant to all the species are very susceptible to have cracks and it's something that is ha even hard to avoid. Is because the, the the anatomy itself of the bamboo, so the distribution of the fibers in the cone, the the waterproof skin that don't allow the humidity escape easily. So that create uh, uh, changes in humidity inside of the bamboo during the drying process when there is high temperature and uh, and, and changes in the uh, moisture content in the in the ambience. So bamboos start to have internal stresses and sometimes they crack to liberate those uh, stresses. So in a summer time, you can hear the bamboos cracking like popcorns, like uh, they explode. So it's a, it's a, a big issue. So we, we in BASE, I'm talking about BASE now, uh, we develop like a criteria of cracking uh, uh, methods to, to, to determine how critical a crack is. Uh, I know the uh, ISO standard also took some of these criteria probably from uh, NSR10. I am not sure that we can confirm that. We have some criteria about uh, crack uh, definition. But um, normally what we say is that uh, if a crack is just between two nodes, so it's containing one internode, it's acceptable because it's contained, it's a stop. But when we have a, a long crack that is passing many internodes and even you can see inside the bamboo, that is a critical crack that affects the integrity of the bamboo. For other, uh, on the other hand, when we are doing the process of a structural design, we take in account that the cracks reduce the capacity of the structural capacity of the elements. So uh, the elements that are susceptible, for example, a shear parallel, that is a failure that creates cracks, is already um, reduced by a but a big safe factor. So those are things that affect, but can be uh, absorbed by the uh, process of design. We get very good results in laboratory and apply uh, safety factors. 
Okay. You know? yeah. So I don't know if they thank you very much, Luis. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Luis. Uh, to our uh, presenters today, uh, Professor David Trujillo, Professor Garciano, Architect Ray Villanueva, uh, Engineer Luis Lopez, thank you very much for your contribution. And, and to all our viewers who joined us, um, I know you have a lot of questions uh, you posted in the live comments. Uh, what we will do here in Base by Foundation is that we will reply back to you. Uh, if you send us your email, we will reply back to you or to your face, Facebook account, and we'll give you a, a, a short and sweet answer to that. Uh, in today's session, we have a very uh, big view of what ISO is all about. What is the... Uh, uh, the new standards, the ISO Philippine National Standard 22157 in terms of the testing of the mechanical properties of bamboo. Uh, we also the presentation, the PNS 19624, the grading of the bamboo poles, and uh, it sparked a lot of interest from our viewers today. Uh, again, um, to all our our colleagues out there, this is the first of the Facebook uh, live series. We will uh, 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 come up with some more. We'll uh, give you a deep dive on, on many of your questions that you posted today. Uh, at least we are now pretty guided on the level of the interest of our viewers in on this topic and specific on what topics. Uh, and, and then from what I've heard in today's discussion, there is big interest in the ISO 22156, the one uh, Dr. Uh, Professor David Trujillo is currently working and, um, and how we can translate that to the National Structural Code of the Philippines here uh, through Professor Garciano. So there are more topics coming your way uh, in this Facebook Live series. So again, on, on behalf of all our guests, uh, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, special thanks to Hilti Foundation uh, for supporting us on this project and, and to the rest of our colleagues in, in the universities like De La Salle de, Man de, La Salle de Manila and, and Coventry University in UK. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, I wish everyone a, a good day ahead. And uh, we're signing off until our next Facebook Live series. Thank Bye you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Thank you, Professor.